You can see it in his eyes. Shifty. Really? Oh, I think he's quite handsome. An old smarmy kind of way, maybe. So I think of food for about 40. Oh, well, you'd have to ask my husband or my son about that. Mrs Catchball? Oh, I, I go by White. Margaret will do. Senior Sergeant Croydon asked us to come down. Apparently you've had some security concerns. Security? Yeah. It's, it's a gathering of supporters. Sorry, ma'am. I called the police. Uh, Andrea Stevens was hanging around the electoral office yesterday. Thought she might try to cause a disturbance. Uh, wouldn't want any embarrassing pictures in tomorrow's Gazette. Well, there's no one outside, but if you have any problems... Well, Andrea? Give it... well, I wouldn't have worried you with it myself. Uh, have you seen Robert? He's due any minute. He's supposed to show me his speech for today. He said it was important. He was in Melbourne overnight. He probably got held up. Well, you tell him I'll see him later. I'm due at a meeting. Listen, if you've got any problems at all, you know where to find us. You're not a Robert Catchpole fan? Put it this way. If I save his life, can I have a police funeral? <laughs> no one's asking you to take a bullet for him, Joe. I wouldn't have to take a bullet. Dad would kill me. Ah, Labor man. Just slightly. I was born on Remembrance Day, 1975. First day at a hospital, Mum and Dad took me to a protest march, dismissal of Whitlam. I wouldn't go telling that story too loudly around these parts. Why? You think they're a bit conservative? Thank you, Senator Mount Thomas 258. Mount Thomas 258 receiving. You're invading my privacy just All right, all right, what's going on here then? He's in there, I know he is. She's trying to force her way into my house. There are illegal activities going on in there. What, what kind of illegal activities? Hey, excuse me, sir, would you mind putting the camera away? Do you have a purpose here, sir? Yeah, I'm working. All right, what seems to I'm with the problem. Gazette. Anthony Tunes. No, 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 no. You're not related to... Tony? Yeah, he's my uncle. He's away at the moment. On a sign. So what exactly are you doing here? She called me. Unlicensed brothel and the people of Mount Thomas have a right to know. That is complete crap. Oh, why don't you go in there and take a look? Would you mind? Be my guest. You're not invited along, Mrs. Tins. See? Normal house. Not a ceiling mirror in sight. Oh, to hell with it, Catherine. Mr. Catchpool. should do something about her, Robert. I don't know what, Catherine. She won't listen to me. You're referring to the woman outside? Yes. Andrea Stevens. She blames me for the death of her son. She has made certain allegations, sir, which should be sorted out. Perhaps you better take this down the station. But he can't go through the door without being plastered all over the front page of the Gazette. That's not really a police matter. This is a private visit. And my friendship with Mrs. Shepherd is no one else's business. Perhaps there is something we can do. Constable Parrish, oh, just one second. Wait by the front door and bring Mr. Catchpole out on my signal, all right? So, mm. Vicky, let him stew. What about his wife and son? Should we let them stew too? In truth to the story that the MLA for Hetherington is in there? See, what goes on inside this house, sir, is none of your business. What's well, a matter of public interest? We're not going anywhere. Look, if someone was inside the house with Mrs Shepherd, just hypothetically, do you think they'd be silly enough to come out the front door? Is there a back way? I believe there's a lane way. But that's his car. There's always a cab, sir. daughter, Natalie. She was only 18 when... Anyway. It was the Stevens boy that got her hooked in the first place. You know that for a fact? She told me. On one of the many occasions when she tried to get herself straight. 
He was also the one that sold her the drugs that killed her. I thought people should be warned. It was the wrong thing to do. He was just another addict. I was acting out of anger, grief. I used Coward's Castle to get revenge. I could well have contributed to Louis Stevens' death. Excuse me, Sergeant, I want to show you this. Yeah. Looks like there might be something to Mrs. Stevens' allegations. What is it? Mrs. Shepherd has a prior conviction for working in an unlicensed brothel. <laughs> when? In 1978. If you're asking if I pay her to have sex, the answer's no. Can I ask the nature of your relationship? No, you can't. Why not? Because it's none of your business. Now, if that's all, Sergeant. Uh, there is one more thing, sir. Mrs. Stevens, she's likely to go on being a problem for you. Technically, she's stalking you. What do you think I should do? Well, you could take out an intervention order. Does it have to come to that? Well, you could try an apology. Constable. No. She's right. I could. I'll take your complaint, of course, but I can't And guarantee... nothing will be done. That's what you're saying. I'm not saying anything of Always pride. look after your own, don't you? Well, that's all I was doing. That doesn't entitle you to harass Mr Catchpole. You might call it that. I call it a dose of his own medicine. But as I said, I'll take your complaint. My boy needed help. Compassion. <laughs> not to be named in Parliament as a drug dealer. Unfortunately, <laughs> none of this is going to bring him back. Lewis left a note. Did you know that? Yes. Yes, it was mentioned at the inquest. He couldn't take the pressure. His name splashed all over the front pages. He was just a, a, a lost, confused kid. I'm sure it wasn't his intention to drive <laughs> Lewis to suicide. Catch Paul's not getting away with it. I'm here to complain about the conduct of Sergeant Gallagher. We'll have to talk with Senior Sergeant Croydon, and he's busy at the moment, so I can get him to give you a call. Uh, no. No, that's all right. I'll wait. Fine. We'll take a seat. Hey? Oh, no. Wouldn't want to get deep vein from those. You think you can fix everything with an apology? No, but at least come and see me. Talk. I don't think I've got anything to say to you. We should at least try. We owe that much to our kids. Mr Catchpool, can you tell us why you're speaking to the police today? Who the blazes are you? This is Anthony Timms of the Mount Thomas Gazette. Anthony Timms, you're not related to His nephew. Well, Mr Catchpool, is there any truth in the rumour about a liaison with a lady in Penhope Crescent? That's a load of rubbish, Mr Timms. My father's here to discuss a traffic management plan with Senior Sergeant Croydon. Is that correct, Senior Sergeant? Absolutely no comment. He's a smooth operator, I'll rather give him that. You didn't hear him talk about his daughter. I thought he was sincere. Sincere and not wanting to be caught stooping a pro, maybe. As far as we know, Mrs Shepherd hasn't been involved in prostitution since 1978. Well, who's to say she's not back on the game? Well, you don't think we might have heard about her? Well, she's hardly going to tell us, is she? We are the police parish. He's having an affair, Joe, that's all. He's got you sucked right in, hasn't he? He's even got you protecting him from the press. All right, Parrish, that's enough. For the record, I fully support the sergeant's actions in this matter. I trust I can rely on your discretion. Yeah, of course. But let's hope Andrea Stevens maintains the rage. Oh, nice turn of phrase, Joe. You picked that up from your dad. Actually, I am worried about Mrs Stevens and Mr Catchpool being in the same room together. Well, Andrea's very angry, justifiably so. She used to have that chemist shop up on Murray Street, didn't she? Yeah, she let the business fall apart once Lewis died. The bank's foreclosed. Bastards. Why don't you and Jones go by the electoral office and make sure nothing's getting out of hand? With pleasure. Oh, look, I don't care which side of the fence they sit on, so long as they deal with the local issues. And Robert Catchpool's been great for this town. Well, what about what he did to Andrew's son, Lewis? It's a personal issue. You know about his daughter. He abused parliamentary privilege. He's got blood on his hands. Hey, so how about the muddy? Is for... Yeah, Grimshaw, eh? He's going to be... Admit it, right. he's a hypocrite, Chris. Can I quote you on that? I don't think your readers would be particularly interested in what I've got to say, Anthony. No. They'd rather read about the honourable member and the hooker. Are you old enough to be in here, mate? I'll be 21 next birthday. I just need a confirmation. Uh, can you prove it? What? Oh, your birthday, you've got a driver's licence? Well, not on me, no. Well, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. You can't do that. Oh, yeah, I can. I'm sure you wouldn't want to get the licence seen to any trouble. You won't silence me. Uh, how'd you go at Robert Catchpool's office? Any trouble? Oh, not by the time we got there. According to his son, the meeting only lasted five minutes before Andrew Stevens stormed out. It's nothing to be pleased about, Joe. 
Now the disturbance at the best little whorehouse in Mount Thomas? See, she goes straight out there and stirs up more trouble. No, no, no it wasn't Andrea this time. Huh? That no, was a neighbour. Says there's a young schoolgirl being forced into the house. That's my daughter. She lives here? No, normally she's at boarding school. What's she done? The complaint was about you, I'm afraid. Not her. There was a disturbance seen here earlier. She's run away from school. Yes, we did have an argument. Yes, there was some shouting. I'm very sorry if I've upset anyone. Do you mind if we speak to your daughter? Is that really necessary? You were seen pulling her into the house. We just need to make sure everything's all right. We wouldn't want her being forced into doing anything against her will. We know about your conviction. It's on the record. Look, I, um, I haven't been on the game for years. I didn't tell Jessica. I just didn't think it was something that she needed to know about. What do you do for a living these days? I'm a beauty therapist. Mum? Jessica? What's wrong? What are the police doing? It's no drama, just a couple of unpaid parking fines. That's all. Must be a lot of money in beauty therapy, that's all I said. The girl could have won a scholarship or they could have inherited from a rich uncle that's or something. That's right. Plenty of kids from ordinary families go to fancy schools. Yes, but we find out about it the day we get a complaint about her money. And not a complaint from someone with their own agenda. He's disappeared. I've tried his mobile. He's not at his office. It's all right, it's all right. Calm down, Mr Catchpole. You're talking about your, your father? He should have been at the Imperial an hour ago. The Senate has arrived. Everyone's waiting. He may have simply been held up somewhere. Yeah, like this morning. Did you try Catherine Shepherds? Something must have happened. Did your father have any other engagements today? As far as I know, today was clear. He's not with your mother. She's waiting at the Imperial with everyone else. What about his car? Not at his office. All right, you'd better give me the details. I'll send somebody out to have a look around. Well, now we know Andrea Stevens didn't kidnap him. It was worth checking out anyway. I think we should take a cruise between the Electoral Office and the Imperial. Would we do that for anyone else who was an hour late for a party? So, Robert Catchpool is our state member of parliament. And these people need our protection, whatever their political persuasion. We go Senator Mount Thomas 258. 258 receiving. Report of an abandoned vehicle near the Witchery Turnoff, the Black Holden Statesman. Quebec Uniform Victor 332. That's ours. That's him. Yep. Mount Thomas 358 to VKC. Urgently request an ambulance yeah. on Fenwick Road near the Widgery turn off. It's too late. No skid marks. Oh, no damage. It doesn't appear to have been a collision. I don't think there was another vehicle involved. We just felt it coming on. Pulled over, all over Red Rover. This is exactly what. Well, so we think your father had a heart attack. We'll no more when we get to the coroner's report. Do you know if he had a heart condition? Blood pressure, high blood pressure, so he had medication. Party leaders across the country today paid tribute to the late MLA for Hetherington, Robert Catchpool. The leader of the opposition described him as a true gentleman who never lost sight of the importance of family values. I certainly miss him around here. He said that the Bush Remember when he threatened to resign his seat over the Mount Thomas bypass? Well, no one else could have stopped him, that's for sure. How did you go with Catchpool's wife? Yeah. yeah. She's upset. But? I don't know. It was more like she lost a hairdresser or something, not her husband. People react to grief in different ways. Yeah, I suppose. Mr. Catchpool is leading to speculation that his son Bobby is set to take his central Victorian seat in the upcoming by-election. Well, that does not surprise. Well, this is a private time of grieving. I'd ask you to respect that. But can we expect an announcement within the next few days? If the party called, I'd have to give it my consideration. Does that mean? No, you will be really, that's all I have to say. So is the party calling? Do you think? Well, it was always said that when his old man resigned, Bobby would take over. Oh, looks like it gets a bit earlier than expected. Everyone right for a drink here? Oh, perfectly, thank you. Uh, it's all right. Good idea. 
Terrible news about the local member. I hear there was a blonde in the car with him. Is that right? Bosk. Uh, anything my readers would be interested in? Sorry? Who, who, who are you? This is Tony Tim's nephew. Anthony. Pleased to meet you. I'll tell you what, mate. Why don't I make amends for this afternoon and buy you a beer? Uh, yes. But... Yeah, beer, thanks, Chris. And do you play darts? Yes. Good. So, what's up? The autopsy report on Robert Catchpool has come in. There's been a development. What kind of development? Postmortem lividity was not consistent with the position of the body, and abrasions found suggest that the body was dragged some distance. Meaning he didn't die in the car. Hmm. Somebody put him there. It's obvious what happened. The honourable member went for a quickie before his party, died in action, and his girlfriend moved the body. You've certainly got away with words, Parry. Why would she do that? What, to avoid embarrassment? Why else? Possible. Sounds like you'd better have another word with Catherine Shepherd. Joe? Uh, PJ, can I just... I trust you'll handle this matter with the delicacy it deserves. Jessica, these people need to have a word with me. Could you give us a while? No, I wouldn't listen. Jessica, please. Is there a reason you don't want your daughter present, Mrs. Ship? What would you like to ask me? I understand Mr. Robert Catchpool was here yesterday morning. Yes. Did you see him at all during the day? No, I didn't. What about you, Jessica? Don't go dragging her into this. Dragging her into what? Robert is dead! What does it matter? Well, it matters because somebody moved his body after he died and we need to find out who. Was he here when he collapsed? No. No, he wasn't. Is there something else you'd like to say, Jessica? No, there isn't. Sorry. All right, thank you for your time. We'll, uh, we'll let ourselves out. She moved that body and I reckon someone helped her. That's a big call. Well, think about it. She wants to avoid public exposure. How's she going to move that body by herself? She must have had help. Uh, maybe she asked her daughter. Mm -hmm. Well, they would have needed two drivers. Jessica's only 16. A lot of 16-year-olds have been known to drive. Well, this one barely even talks to her mother. Why would she cooperate in a thing like this? Um, she's right. That's crap. No one moved my father's body after he died. Why would they? Well, how about to avoid a scandal? We're talking about a man who wouldn't even use government stamps for his private correspondence. Look, we're just trying to clear up a few discrepancies here. Now... If this has got anything to do with your father's relationship with Catherine Shepard... Oh, come on. It's not enough for the press to go muckraking. I don't care about that. But what I do care about is if he died at the lady's house and the two of you moved the body. No, that didn't happen. Then where were you at 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon? 2 o'clock? I was at the electoral office. Can anyone verify that? There wasn't anyone else there, but it wasn't long afterwards I was at the Imperial. Any number of people can verify that. We've got your father's personal effects from the car here. Now, that's his diary. That's full of confidential information. Right, but we do need to know where he was and who he saw before he died. We need the password. Well, we can get our techies to open it. Hmm. Looks like he kept yesterday morning free. That strikes you as suspicious. What's going on with this entry here? Looks like some sort of a code. It seems to be a weekly thing. What does a code mean? That'll be the time that Dad set aside for personal business. Banking, doctor, dental appointment, that sort of thing. Right, because one of these blocks of time is the night before last. Yeah. He was supposed to be in Melbourne? Well, obviously, he had personal business in Melbourne. Yeah, except first thing yesterday morning, we know he was at Catherine Shepherd's place. What do you want me to say? We were having a relationship. So these uh, blocks of time he was with you? Yeah, that'd be right. Did Mr. Ketchpool pay you for your time? No, it wasn't like that. Robert was a very nice man. It sounds like it's been going on for a while. Yeah, quite a while. And he spent the night before last with you? Yes. Catherine, did he come to your place yesterday? No, I told you no. So, according to this, he had an appointment with Mr. Isaac Rosedale at one o'clock. So? So, we've spoken to Mr. Rosedale, and uh, he said that Robert cancelled the appointment because he had personal business to attend to. Not my business. Now, his car was parked out the front of your place, wasn't it? That's how Andrea Stevens tracked him down. 
She didn't see it yesterday afternoon. One of the neighbours might have. Why don't you ask them then? Some of the neighbours have spotted the car on previous occasions, but no one remembers seeing the car yesterday. <laughs> well, it doesn't mean it wasn't there. I mean, he's not exactly careful. See, that's what I don't get. He's a married politician having an affair, but he leaves his car parked outside his mistress's house for everyone to see. Yeah, well, he's a very popular bloke. Perhaps he thought people would just overlook his picket. It sounds like political suicide to me. Well, so much for Catherine Shepherd's statement about no money changing hands. You spit it out. Robert Catchpole pays for a daughter to go to that fancy boarding school. Doesn't mean it's payment for sex. It could be just a gesture of friendship. Mm. Pretty generous gesture. Yes. But sorry to interrupt, boss, but there's a bit of a kerfuffle down the funeral parlour. You have no right to be here. Just Bobby, leave, please, please Bobby, now. there's Dang. no need to behave like that. I'm sorry, no. <laughs> What's going on here, sir? Okay, he won't let me see Robert. I'm trying to explain that this is a family occasion. I am family. Okay, Robert's my father. Just get her out. Jessica, are you all right? No, oh, what the hell do you care? Where's she been? To see her father. They were close, Jessica and Mr. Catchpool? Yes, they were very close. Even though she only knew him as my close friend, Robert. When did she find out? Very recently. Is that what yesterday's argument was about? Look, he loved her. It wouldn't have made any difference. He would have done anything for her. Except tell her who he really was. Do you think he enjoyed deceiving her? Look, I've got to go. I'm sorry. She's going to have to come out of the inquest. Yes, I know that, but try and keep it under your hat until it does. What's this? The pathologist has come up with a salacious tidbit about the late Mr. Catchpool. It seems there were traces in his bloodstream of a substance very much like ecstasy. Robert Catchpool on ecstasy. Funnier things have happened, Joe. Tony's young protege will be drooling. I don't want either of them knowing anything about this. Hey, isn't there a batch going around at the moment? Um, what are they called? Don Juans or something like that? Don Juans? Oh, they're supposed to improve your sex life, boss. Oh, you don't say. Now it all starts falling into place. Actually, Dr. Mel said a few casualties come in. People complaining of heart palpitations, high anxiety, that sort of thing. How do we know that Catchpool was taking these Don Juan? His doctor said that Robert Catchpool had a serious heart condition and they were discussing bypass surgery. So Catchpool knows he's got a crook heart. Why would he risk his life taking a dangerous drug like this? Maybe he didn't know what the side effects were. Or maybe someone who did gave it to him. Why would he fly in the face of medical opinion and, and take a drug that was likely to kill him? Ego? A pretty big ego. Well, he's a politician. It's rather more likely than someone trying to knock him off. His girlfriend reckoned he didn't need any help. Well, if he was feeling a little insecure, he might not have told her. So, you're a man on the wrong side of middle age, your performance is flagging. Where would you go to get help? Don't look at me. No. No way, no. Well, we're just going on what the pathologist had to say. He, he never mentioned having any difficulties in that department. It's hardly likely to talk to me about that stuff, is he? We haven't found any unidentified pills as you've been going through his belongings. No, sorry. All right. Thanks. Hey, um, you're not going to mention this to my mum, are you? Well, sir, we, we do have to eliminate the possibility that someone gave your father ecstasy deliberately. Have you thought about Andrea Stevens? Do you really think she'd go to those extremes? Well, it was a pretty bitter meeting the other day. She ended up calling Dad a murderer and storming out. He's pointing the finger at Andrea because less embarrassing than the okay, truth. Okay, all right, but I still think she's worth a few inquiries. Well, say so you're right. When and how would she have done it? You think I put ecstasy in his coffee? It's just a line of inquiry we're following. <laughs> Let me tell you, if I'd put anything in there, it would have been rat poison. I don't know. You might have thought giving him ecstasy was poetic justice. <laughs> Way too subtle for me. You're a pharmacist, though, right? Yeah. Well, you'd understand the drug side effects. Oh, well, so would plenty of other people. You also knew he had a heart condition. Not many others understood that. He was a customer of yours when you had the chemist shop. We checked. Yes, all right. I knew he had a heart condition. I used to fill his prescriptions before Lewis could... but I never tried to kill him. But you did have strong feelings about him. Strong feelings? Oh, yes. But killing him? 
That would have made it too easy for him. I wanted to humiliate him. I wanted to strip him of everything he had. Just like he'd done to me. Margaret, there were traces of ecstasy found in your husband's bloodstream. What? We're having problems establishing where it might have come from and we need to eliminate the possibility that someone gave it to him surreptitiously. You're suggesting I killed him? No, not at all. Why on we earth need... would you think I'd do a thing like that? Oh. Because of his affair with Catherine Shepherd. Yes, yes, I knew. Everything. And about Jessica. Ms. White, where, where did you go after you left the hotel yesterday morning? Home. I had some phone calls to make. Robert was offered a place in the ministry once. Did you know that? Yes, yes, there was some talk. Mm. He had differences with the Premier and didn't want to be bound by Cabinet confidentiality. Oh, if there was ever a time I could have killed him, that would have been it. So why didn't you leave then? Didn't need the grief. We had a comfortable arrangement and I'd started pinning my hopes on Bobby. Well, M Margaret White did make phone calls yesterday morning. That suggests he wasn't lying. It doesn't prove anything, though. Ah, she's too straight with us. Maybe that was just an act. Maybe you could do something useful like going to get the lunches. Constable Parrish, this is a surprise. Your mate not with you? Jonesy, no. If you think I'm saying anything about the case... Ah, so the investigation to the death of Robert Catchpool is ongoing? They're saying the member had trouble making a stand in the house, if you get my drift. Where'd you hear that? I got the sources. You confirming it, then? I'm doing nothing of the sort. They also say you like to indulge in a bit of chemical assistance. Yeah? Well, your sources were wrong. About the drugs? No, that bit's right. Leak in the coroner's office. About him indulging? I didn't say yes, that. Yes, you did, just now. My God, there's a murder investigation. Someone gave them to him. Thank now, you hang on very a minute. much. There you go. What do you want? I don't know. It's like I'm just with the same mosquito over and over. Jessica, this is Hallowell. Why can't I be with her when you talk to her? In these circumstances, we didn't think it'd be appropriate. Hey, Jay. Just grab a seat. We won't take long. What's Jessica doing here? Well, Catherine won't tell us what happened yesterday. Maybe the daughter will. I don't know. I wasn't there. So where were you? Nowhere. I'd gone for a walk. Jessica, we're trying to find out what happened to your dad. She killed him. That's what happened. Your mum? They were arguing. That's why I left and when I came back there was nobody in the house. Right, and, and when your mum returned, Jessica, did she say that your dad died at the house? Why don't you tell us this earlier? Because she said not to. She didn't want any gossip about Robert being my father. So argument, was it a serious one? I've never known them to argue like that before. What was it about? Jessica. It was about me. He wanted to quit politics and come and live with us. He said we'd be a family. Your mum didn't want that? Well, she said he'd ruin everything. But you felt differently, eh? Yeah, I did. I play the piano. Mum would never have time to come and see me play, but Robert would always be there. He would always come. I loved him. You don't have any evidence. Which is why I want a coroner's authority. But that poor kid has just lost her dad. She doesn't need us turning over her, her home. Her mother has been lying. Jessica told us that. Maybe he did die there. But it doesn't mean Catherine Shepherd fed him ecstasy. Joe, they had a blazing row before he died. Yeah, exactly, which increased his stress levels, which gave him a heart attack. And Full maybe, stop, end of just story. maybe she gave him a nudge. Sergeant. I'm trying to throw here, thanks. Constable Jones. Let's try the back, Constable Parrish. Mother, what are they doing here? What are you looking for? 
You haven't done anything wrong, Jessica. No, I should have kept my mouth shut. What are these? We'll have it confirmed shortly, but this does look like the ecstasy doing the rounds at the moment. I wouldn't know anything about that. What was it doing under your bed? I have no idea. We know that Robert Catchpole died at your place. Jessica told us. She wasn't there. Well, she says you told her. Well, she must have misunderstood. You're only trying to protect her, we know that. What did you and Robert argue about? There was no argument. What, he was going to blow everything? Hang out his dirty linen? I told you, there was no argument. Did you give him the eckies? Of course not. Then who owns the pills? I told you. Yeah, I know. You've never seen them before. Okay, so who helped you move the body? What body? You're not helping yourself, Mrs. Shepherd. Oh, yes, I am. I'm helping myself. It's you that I'm not a helping. A politician dies in suspicious circumstances. How long do you think it's going to be before it's splashed all over the front pages? This is going to go public. We're giving you an opportunity to do some damage control here. I've got nothing to say. I've just had Margaret White, the legal Mrs. Catchpool, on the blower. Tiny Tony Timms, cub reporter, has been asking her questions about our investigation into her husband's homicide. Uh, how did he find out? He says it came from one of us. Boss, I'm not that dumb. I'm not suggesting it would have happened purely out of stupidity. I never told him we suspected murder. What did you tell him? Nothing. Almost. A police spokesperson also confirmed that the focus of the investigation had moved away from accidental death to homicide, I presume. You are the police spokesperson? I never told him that. You shouldn't have told him anything at all. He tricked me. It won't happen again. You got what you wanted. That's not fair. Well, Catchpool being exposed as the hypocrite you always said he was? I never wanted it to happen like this. Yes, well, that's the problem with opening your mouth when you shouldn't. Sometimes there are unforeseen consequences, yes? Thought you should know, I just had Catherine Shepherd on the phone. Mm -hmm. She and Jessica just had a huge fight over the call girl stuff. And Jessica's left threatening to kill herself. I think I might know where she is. Yeah, I think someone else should go in the circumstances. My mess, please let me fix it. Why didn't you tell me? Because she loves you. She wanted to protect you. Protect herself, you mean? Would it be so bad if she did? I don't think she's particularly proud of her past. It's disgusting. I'm sure she had her reasons. One of the hardest things to accept is that our parents are human mistakes, just like everybody else. Your mother wasn't a whore. Father was a plumber, if that count. <laughs> My father was probably one of her customers. I'm only here because she's him for money. You don't know that. What you do know is that your dad loved you a whole lot. Enough to give up everything for you. I miss him so much. I know you do. I bet your mum does too. Thanks. Thanks very much. 
How about you come down to the station and clear a few things up? What happened on the morning he died? As Jessica said, we'd had an argument. He... he was really shaken up by that Andrea Stevens thing. Well, he just had this ridiculous idea that he wanted to resign his seat and, and come here to live. What would have been wrong with that? Well, he wanted to go public about everything. He was sick of living a lie. He said they'd sling less mud that way. <sighs> Pity about Jessica's life being ruined. Maybe Jessica wasn't going to care what people thought. She's young. She doesn't realise how things can keep on hurting you. Right, so you had a fight with Robert and he collapsed. Is that what happened? Yeah. Why didn't you get medical help? I felt his pulse. He was dead. What did you do? I rang his son, Bobby. She said that? Hmm. What do you say? <laughs> it's total crap, obviously. Well, she rang you on your mobile. We can check your records. Would you like to amend your previous answer? Look, hypothetically, if I were to say that I helped her, would I be looking at serious charges? Not compared to the hypothetical murder charge you could be looking at. Murder? I haven't murdered right, anyone. So what do you know about the ecstasy tablets found in Mrs Shepherd's bedroom? I don't know anything about that. Look, why would I kill my father? Well, didn't he promise you his seat when he retired? No, he didn't promise me anything. He always said I had to win everything on my own merit. That's a bit hard when your old man insists on embroiling himself in a scandal, isn't it? What are you talking about? I don't know what she's talking about. Your father was going to come clean about his relationship with Catherine Shepherd. Throw in the towel. That's news to me. Why well, are you saying he didn't tell you? That's exactly what I'm saying. There would have been people who didn't want your husband going public about his relationship with Miss Shepard. Well, don't look at me. I'd given up on Robert's political career years ago. It could still be personally embarrassing. Believe me, I'm not that easily embarrassed. What about your son? What about him? Oh, he was hoping to succeed his father. Did he know about his plans to go public? His wife? Stupid boy. Did Bobby know? Yes, yes, he did. Well, he told you? He came to the house. He wanted me to appeal to Robert to make him change his mind. Did you agree to that? No. I told him it was about time he stood on his own two feet and he just stormed out. And when, when did this happen? Around midday. A couple of hours before the function. Robert put everything down in the speech he was going to make. Bobby brought me a copy. You really think Bobby Catchpool would give his father a drug he knew was going to be lethal to him? No, I was flying kites, but I think we hit a nerve. He's not well liked, known for hanging onto his father's coattails. That's right, so where and how did he do it? Well, he worked alongside his old man. It wouldn't have been hard. Yeah, it's a fast-acting drug, so it would have happened shortly before he collapsed. So we know he knew what his father was planning. But why would Bobby use ecstasy? And how would he even know what the side effects were of this batch? Maybe he had reason to know. I'll check something out. I had a chat to a few mates of yours. Seems like you enjoy a bit of the nightlife. Not much of that around here. But no, there's a bit if you go looking for it. Your point being? Well, I understand you enjoy playing around on the weekends, a uh, bit of coke, a uh, tab of ecstasy. I'm hardly likely to risk my political career for that. You might rely on the fact that people have a fairly liberal attitude to so-called recreational drugs. You'd have a hard time finding anyone to back you on that. Really? Well, you're not the only one with useful connections, Mr Catchpole. OK, maybe on weekends. I've occasionally indulged in the odd line of coke, but I didn't kill my father. See, the problem is, there you go lying to us again. You say you didn't move the body and you didn't know that he was going to resign. I didn't. There you go again. What's that? That's a copy of the speech that your father was going to make the day that he died. But I... Erased it from the computer's hard drive, here we know. My mother. That's right. Your own mother. Not even she thinks you measure up. 
You see, I think you deliberately wrote that to stuff up your chances of getting into Parliament. I helped move the body, that's all. You were never going to make it on your own merit, were you? You had to rely on your father's credibility. And pretty soon he's not going to have any. Maybe you thought it was better if he had a sudden heart attack. How could he do this to me after all the work I'd put in? He drops his bottle shell and rubs my nose in it by treating me like the office boy. Gets me to make him a cup of coffee. I was standing at the sink. I just thought, why not? I'm just packing. On your way back to school? <laughs> you kidding? No way I'd want to go back there now. Where are you going? I don't know. Just away from here? Uh, the fuss will die down eventually. In the meantime, maybe it'd be better sticking it out together. Oh, how can I stay here with her? Your mum's made mistakes. Mistakes? She's turned my whole life into a lie. Maybe you're blaming the wrong parent for that. Well, she could have told me the truth. All these years, it's been Robert wasn't brave enough to be your father. But your mum, she's always been your mum. Your mum's done it tough. On the whole, she hasn't done a bad job. Yeah, I guess. Maybe it's worth sticking around. And so with Bobby Catchpool facing charges in connection with the death of his father, the field is now wide open for the prize seat of Hetherington. The Labor there you go, Chrissy, there's a chance. I don't think party politics are quite my line, thanks. The way stand as an independent. There's a lot of them are getting in these days. So what do you reckon, Judge? What do I reckon what? Oh, these clowns are trying to convince Chris Shaw to run for state parliament. Oh, good idea. Can I have a vodka? Yeah, you're going to vote for me? Well, it depends on the party. Independent. I don't know. Her dad would kill her. He'd only kill me if I voted Conservative. Voting Independent, well, he'd probably settle for thumbscrews. Do you hear that right, Mrs Riley? You're standing. Oh, no, look, hang on a minute. No, He's no, just... don't you listen to her, mate. She's standing and she'll win in a landslide. Oh, thanks for the tip. Uh, maybe an interview sometime. Thanks a lot. He'll print that now. Yeah, and then you'll deny it and he'll have to print a retraction. Might teach him a lesson. Well done, Machiavelli. <laughs> on the house. Cheers. See it in his eyes. Shifty. Really? Oh, I think he's quite handsome. Oh, an old smarmy kind of way, maybe. So I think a third for about 40. Oh, well, you'd have to ask my husband or my son about that. Mrs. Catchball? Oh, I, I go by White. Margaret will do. Senior Sergeant Croydon asked us to come down. Apparently, you've had some security concerns. Security? Yeah. It's, it's a gathering of supporters. Sorry, ma'am. I called the police. 
Uh, Andrea Stevens was hanging around the electoral office yesterday. Thought she might try to cause a disturbance. Uh, wouldn't want any embarrassing pictures in tomorrow's Gazette. Well, there's no one outside, but if you have any problems... Well, Andrea, give I wouldn't have worried you with it myself. Uh, have you seen Robert? He's due any minute. He's supposed to show me his speech for today. He said it was important. He was in Melbourne overnight. He probably got held up. Well, you tell him I'll see him later. I'm due to meet him. Listen, if you've got any problems at all, you know where to find us. You're not a Robert Catchpole fan? Put it this way. If I save his life, can I have a police funeral? <laughs> no one's asking you to take a bullet for him, Joe. I wouldn't have to take a bullet. Dad would kill me. Ah, Labor man. Just slightly. I was born on Remembrance Day, 1975. First day at a hospital, Mum and Dad took me to a protest march, dismissal of Whitlam. I wouldn't go telling that story too loudly around these parts. Why? You think they're a bit conservative? Okay, Senator Mount Thomas 258. Mount Thomas 258 receiving. You're invading my privacy. Just all right, go all right. Away. What's going on here then? He's in there. I know he is. She's trying to force her way into my house. There are illegal activities going on in there. What, what kind of illegal activities? Like, excuse me, sir. Would you mind putting the camera away? Do you have a purpose here, sir? Yeah, I'm working. Right, I'm with the Gazette. Yeah, Anthony Toombs. No, 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 no. Tony? Yeah, he's my uncle. He's away at the moment. On assignment. So what exactly are you doing here? She called me. It's an unlicensed brothel and the people of Mount Thomas have a right to know. That is complete crap. Oh, why don't you go in there and take a look? Would you mind? Be my guest. You're not invited along, Mr. Timms. See? Normal house. Not a ceiling mirror in sight. Oh, to hell with it, Catherine. Mr. Catchpole. do something about her, Robert. I don't know what, Catherine. She won't listen to me. You're referring to the woman outside? Yes. Andrea Stevens. She blames me for the death of her son. She has made certain allegations, sir, which should be sorted out. Perhaps you better take this down the station. But he can't go through the door without being plastered all over the front page of the Gazette. That's not really a police matter. This is a private visit. And my friendship with Mrs. Shepherd is no one else's business. Perhaps there is something we can do. Constable Parrish, oh, just one second. Wait by the front door and bring Mr. Catchpool out on my signal. All right. Besides, mm. Vicky, let him stew. What about his wife and son? Should we let them stew too? In truth, the story that the MLA for Hetherington is in there? You see, what goes on inside this house, sir, is none of your business. What's sir? the matter of public interest? We're not going anywhere. Look, if someone was inside the house with Mrs. Shepherd, just hypothetically, do you think they'd be silly enough to come out the front door? Is there a back way? I believe there's a lane way. But that's his car. There's always a cab, sir. <laughs> 